Hello everybody and my name is Shilpa Joshi. I'm a consultant dietitian and diabetes educator practicing in Mumbai and I'm going to be talking about nutri balance, fueling wellness and empowering health. So let's begin with the presentation. So for introduction, so we all know that the intake of food according to body's nutritional requirements is known as good nutrition. Good nutrition is essential to good health and we know that poor nutrition can weaken immune system, increase the risk of disease and impair development, especially in young growing children. So what are the functions of food? It is essential for development from conception to old age. So from pediatric or rather neonatal to geriatric age group, it provides strong health and strong immunity. And we have seen that more, of, more than enough in the COVID era where good food was the only thing which was emphasized on. It lowers susceptibility to disease and it is a basic human right necessary for personal and national development and we know that there is a lot of data about malnutrition whether it is in India or global and we know that in 2021 about 425 million people in Asia were undernourished and 50% uh, more uh, making up more than 50% of world's 768 million undernourished people in 2022 malnourishment affected adult population significantly with 2.5 billion adults being overweight, including 980 million suffering from obesity and 390 million experiencing underweight. Here, I would like to dwell for a minute. Lot of times it is thought that people who are obese are not undernourished, but one has to understand that obesity is a kind of undernourishment where individuals are undernourished for micronutrients. They may be undernourished for even proteins. So this is the epidemiological data, this is the global data, this is the Indian data, where in global data we know 2 billion suffer from micronutrient deficiency and I think this is less spoken about but this is very widely prevalent. About a third of people suffer from one form of micronutrient deficiency globally in India. People, about 195 million people are undernourished, 80% of them suffer from micronutrient deficiency. And according to UNSDG, 19% uh, of women and 16% of men under 50 are undernourished. And that's the working population of the nation. And they are undernourished, whether they are obese or they are underweight is beyond this. But there is malnourishment, which is observed. Now, what are the consequences of uh, malnourishment or nutritional deficiency? So macronutrients are the nutrients that are required in the greater quantity and they, they are such as, you know, in a fat, protein and carbohydrate. And in India, there is also macronutrient deficiency, which is quite prevalent. So protein energy malnutrition is actually caused by starvation because there is malnourishment of both energy as well as protein. PM develops when the protein intake or the energy intake is insufficient. So basically, it is less food which is available to the individual. It leads, in, uh, leads to decrease in metabolic rate, protein depletion and protein storage in the tissue. Carbohydrate deficiency, very rare in India, but also in people who do not have available food to them, it can lead to gluconeogenesis using protein or fat for energy. This is also a kind of mechanism which happens when individuals follow ketogenic diet because ketogenic diets are very, very popular, especially among younger, uh, younger people. And because of lack of carbohydrate, there is ketosis which is created. And this ketosis will act. Ketosis is the primary indicator of fat mobilization. This condition may cause ketosis, which is recognized by sweet breath order. And then fatty acid deficiency, this is also very, very common and it leads to poor growth, dry skin, slow healing, higher infection rates. This condition often is indicated by high levels of omega-9 and imbalance in the ratios of omega-3 and omega-6. This condition is seen in situations involving fat malabsorption and diseases such as cystic fibrosis. It's very, very common in people who take fat blockers, you know, to lose weight. So if they are taking certain drugs which inhibit absorption of fat, 
in the diet you will see that these people suffer from essential fatty acid deficiency it's also seen in people who eat a very very low fat diet to lose weight now we are going to micronutrient deficiency so we'll go to vitamin a deficiency it leads to inflamed skin infertility delayed growth and respiratory infection it is crucial for preservation of integrity of et in the eyes and urinary intestinal and respiratory tract with the progression of vitamin a deficiency keratomalacia and permanent blindness can occur especially in growing and young children so vitamin a deficiency is again very uh, i mean it is more common in younger people than in older adults vitamin b deficiency b6 can lead to anemia peripheral neuropathy glossitis depression celiac disease crohn disease and seizures vitamin b12 deficiency is very very common not only among vegans but also vegetarians even people who consume dairy in our country but are primarily vegetarians you will see a lot of vitamin b12 deficiency it is rampant it is also rampant in people taking certain medications like metformin so it also causes anemia and cns issues folate deficiency if it occurs in pregnant women can result in birth defects and growth issues for the baby vitamin b12 deficiency is associated with fatal cvd myocardial infarctions and strokes also you know so these are the problems with vitamin b deficiency vitamin c deficiency is lesser common because vitamin c that c is really present all through our food chain and if you are eating a well rounded diet that means your diet has fruits and vegetables in it vitamin c deficiency is rare to occur but in our country though we call ourselves primarily as vegetarians people do not consume enough fruits and vegetables and therefore one can see this deficiency it's called, it leads to scurvy bleeding gums poor wound healing and joint pains it is essential for bone and health energy production and iron absorption very very important in iron absorption especially if iron is available from vegetarian sources vitamin c protects immune system and reduces allergic reactions and helps to fight off infection it plays a important role in osteoblast and osteodentin in formation carnitin synthesis uh, catecholamine synthesis and reduction of urinary tract and uh, infections and folic acid excursion vitamin e again very very important there is a big role of vitamin e in non alcoholic fatty liver disease so vitamin e protects against free radical damage which is associated with disease Uh, the characteristics include ataxia myopathy pigmented retinopathy like retinitis pigmentosa with vision loss then we come to minerals which are also very very important and their uh, uh, deficiencies are again very common but we'll do one last vitamin again which is very very common among indians that is vitamin d there it results from malabsorption decreased synthesis and reduced intake see we do not have many vitamin d fortified foods in india other than with milk being fortified with vitamin d so therefore supplementation of vitamin d becomes very important and it can lead to osteomalacia in adults when vitamin d levels are low calcium deficiency is very very common which leads to osteoporosis dental tissues uh, and it also affects the brain it's important for strong bone and health calcium binds to fatty acids which which can reduce lipid absorption and might therefore lower the risk of cvds zinc deficiency again it leads to skin lesions weakened immune response it is essential for growth and immunity zinc is very well present in the food chain so if you are taking enough nuts sprouts and other things you might get a lot of zinc from your diet as long as you choose these foods magnesium deficiency is associated with osteoporosis hypertension diabetes colorectal cancer and it is found in good amounts in green vegetables and nuts selenium deficiency results in cvd joint tissues and can affect mood it is important for an antioxidant defense and therefore again selenium is present in things like garlic which are very very part of our normal diet but one has to consume them potassium deficiency is common now or people choose to eat highly refined foods and hence low in potassium so this leads to higher blood pressure and heart disease risk so eating more fruits and vegetables is very 
important and biotin deficiency, although rare, can lead to skin rash, hair loss and urological issues. Vitamin K deficiency, again not spoken about so much, but it's very important, leads to bleeding, poor bone development, osteoporosis and increased cardiovascular risk. Vitamin K deficiency may be observed in 8 to 8, 31% of adults and therefore it's less spoken about and therefore more important intake of good amount of green leafy vegetables can give you good amount of vitamin K in your diet. Iron deficiency is spoken about, spoken about enough, but people really don't do anything about it. So lack of enough iron in the food leads to anemia. Long lasting conditions may lead to inflammation such as CCF or obesity and make it difficult for body to regulate and utilize iron. And therefore it's very important to consume if you're non-vegetarian, non-vegetarian food, but if you're vegetarian, use iron-rich foods like green leafy vegetables in your diet and do not forget to add vitamin C-rich foods like lemon or tomato in it so that the iron from there is absorbed. Iodine deficiency can result in hypothyroidism, goiter and developmental problems. So what is the impact of chronic illness on nutritional status? Now we know chronic conditions can significantly affect individuals' nutrition status overall well-being, potentially exacerbating their health challenges, and this can affect uh, recovery and affect the quality of life because you know, once you are uh, ill, your nutritional status is altered because you don't feel like eating or maybe a lot of times nutrient absorption is impaired. There are weight changes. There are medications which are taken which can impact. There can be drug-nutrient interaction. And of course, there is increased energy expenditure, especially with diseases which are acute, like, you know, maybe high fever and other things which can increase energy expenditure. Therefore, what is important is dietary assessment and planning. Supplementation at this point becomes very, very important in management of the nutritional impact of chronic diseases. Of course, monitoring, adjusting and a lot of supportive care is needed. So now there is a need to address nutritional deficiencies. You know, we need to take it into public health campaigns and nutritional education where launch of campaigns to highlight balanced nutrition and its importance. See, people just eat roti sabzi and think that they are eating a balanced diet where it is not balanced because it lacks protein. It may lack essential fatty acids and so on. It may lack raw vegetables. So it lacks bioavailability of vitamins and minerals. So it's very important to actually talk to people about what are balanced diet. Improving access to nutritious food. So providing subsidies for fruits and vegetables and whole grains. Support community garden. Boost fresh produce. These and give the access to this fresh produce. Fortification of food is very important. We have foods which are fortified with vitamin D, uh, especially dairy products. We have salt which is fortified with uh, iodine, but we do not have other uh, fortification of other things like iron or maybe vitamin B12. So enforce mandatory fortification of staples with essential nutrients. Supplementation program, promote supplementation to vulnerable group, especially individuals who are ill, who are convalescing, pregnant and lactating women and young children. Ensure multivitamin and multivitamin supplements too are accessible and affordable and personalize nutrition, develop and disseminate national dietary guidelines, the beautiful guidelines by ICMR. They should be disseminated to everybody and advocate for personalized nutrition advice from healthcare providers. So this is the import, importance of nutrition in acute and chronic illness. Malnutrition is associated with high rates of morbidity and mortality among hospitalized patients leading to increased healthcare cost. We know a malnourished patient is going to recover much later than a well-nourished patient. So nutrition is critical in preventing illness, lowering mor morbidity and mortality among individuals with acute and chronic diseases. Healthy diet helps individual uh, with these diseases to better manage symptom. Disease management, a healthy diet is effective in managing chronic conditions, especially chronic, con chronic metabolic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, so on and so forth. Quality of life, nutrition supports overall well-being and can improve life for those with chronic diseases. 
dietary modification helps to prevent development of chronic diseases or even if they are there it helps to manage them with least amount of pharmacotherapy what are the functions of macro and micronutrients so macronutrients help to reduce risk of chronic diseases such as obesity heart disease and diabetes by taking macronutrients in a balanced amount consuming healthy carbohydrates right amount of fats good amount of proteins from foods help you to maintain and balance healthy body micronutrients are vitamins and minerals needed by body in very small amount hence they are called as micronutrients major function is to enable the body to produce enzymes hormones and other substances which are required for normal growth and development so your macronutrients are carbohydrate protein and fat functions of which are given among carbohydrates the most important ones are dietary fiber which protects your gut and actually protects your heart and metabolic health proteins actually help you to build lean muscle mass like uh, like muscle and bones and it helps to lower cholesterol improve blood pressure and blood sugar levels and fats again essential fats which are omega 3 and omega 6 help you to support cellular function vitamins and minerals we have spoken about so essential nutrients are compounds that your body can't make especially essential fats which your body can't make there are essential amino acids which cannot be generated in our body so our body depends upon food as a source of availability essential nutrients such as carbohydrate lipids protein water vitamins and minerals are important and we know vitamins boost immune system they support and delay certain cancers such as prostate minerals are very important to balance water level to maintain healthy hair and skin and fats are very very essential fats are very important because they improve immune function they control heart disease improve bleeding times and so on and so forth. now a mechanism of immune function and inflammation reduction inflammation inflammatory responses are triggered by exposure to harmful stimuli including injury to toxic chemicals and pathogens it involves complex immune mechanisms which are aimed at healing of the tissue injury this process recruits immune cells chemical mediators cytokines and so forth cytokines play a key role in cell communication initiating amplifying and regulating inflammatory response and ultimate growth is complete restoration of tissue function and multivitamins support in immune function and reducing inflammation especially folic acid and biotin which can which can actually reduce inflammation and actually restore the bodily function so multivitamins and minerals in supporting immune function and reducing inflammation again they are zinc copper iron selenium magnesium and potassium we know zinc aids in development of functions of immune cell iron is necessary for production of hemoglobin uh, which is important for carrying oxygen and also for immunity magnesium supports various immune system including cell signaling copper supports and maintains immune function selenium regulates inflammation and immunity and potassium helps to control host immune function and antimicrobial activity calcium plays a central role in activation of cells of immune system phosphorus improves immune system and has a positive effect against pathogen chromium supports alteration of immune response iodine supports innate immune system molybdenum boost immune system and it can eliminate free radicals and amino acids serve as a building block of protein there are 20 different amino acids in other system now importance of omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acid in managing inflammation we know omega 3 improves triglyceride and blood pressure it supports in managing and preventing chronic disorder it also helps in weight management manages inflammation that occur with disease and omega 3 decreases the amount of fat in liver or it helps you to manage fatty liver omega 6 fatty acids are overall essential dietary fats they help in reduction of inflammatory response if taken in right amount as compared to omega 3 fats and it reduces the risk of heart disease and strokes then there are additional uh, oxidative stress there are additional factors like uh, ginkgong biloba ginkgong biloba acts as cellular scavenger uh, against induced oxidative stress 
blocking the onset of molecule, uh, molecular apoptotic pathway. Then there is ginseng, which it plays an important role in resisting oxidative stress, affecting energy metabolism and other effects. And green tea, which is consumed so popularly now, they protect cells against oxidative damage by dihydroxyl group in the B ring and gallate group in the C ring at position 3 and may neutralize ferric to form redox inactive ion. So these are all very, very important. So not only vitamin minerals, but certain superfoods like these can also help you to build your immunity. Beyond that, for oxidative stress, there are bioflavonoids, there is lycopene, carotenoids, and there is garlic powder. So for bioflavonoids, we know there is potent antioxidants that fight oxidative stress by scavenging harmful free radical and enhancing body's antioxidant stress defense. Then lycopene, it indirectly reacts with reactive oxygen species, which can help to prevent chronic diseases, including CVS and neurogenerative disease. It, uh, carotenoids block the oxidative stress by interacting with nuclear factor, uh, uh, erythroid 2 related factor pathways, enhancing translocation into nucleus. And garlic supplementation can help reduce stress in the body by increasing good antioxidants and decreasing the bad ones. So what is the importance of balanced diet? Ideally, all these factors will come to you if you eat balanced diet. So it will give you macronutrients which are important like proteins, amino acids, essential fatty acids, micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. They are all integral part of balanced diet which will help to maintain and regulate bodily functions. Okay. So what are nutritional requirements with chronic uh, diseases and or infections? Infection can cause fatigue and it can cause a lot of loss of appetite. In long run, it can lead to weight loss and malnutrition. Nutraceutical plays a significant role in maintaining health and well-being of an individual. Garlic and lycopene with vitamins and minerals may help the patient by building immunity, reducing oxidative stress because fighting infection leads to a lot of oxidative stress, enhancing energy, stamina, thus helping to regain good health. So intake of vitamins, minerals, garlic, lycopene during infection helps to build immunity, reducing oxidative stress, enhancing energy, stamina, and gaining good health. So for nutritional requirements specific to adults with chronic diseases in post-surgical recovery, because nutrition is recognized as a vital element in promoting improved, uh, promoting improved recovery following surgery, nutrition is considered as a strong predictor of post-operative outcomes Following a surgery, sufficient nutrient intake reduces stress and supports the restoration of functionality. Patients suffering from malnutrition tend to experience extended hospital stay, increased rates of readmission, and higher incidence of complications and elevated risk of mortality. Intake of amino acids immediately post-operative period could help to support wound healing, immune function, and prevent muscle preservation. So this is how infection impacts disease progression and management and nutraceuticals actually can help in all of this. So it can help in scavenging reactive oxygen species, enhance antioxidant activity, repair mitochondrial function, chelate metal ions, increase immune response, inhibit inflammation, upregulate anti-inflammatory molecules, prevent lipid peroxidation, so on and so forth, and hence taking these becomes imperative. So in conclusion, a balanced diet is responsible for proper maintenance of the immune system and for maintaining good health. Lack of proper balanced diet can lead to malnutrition and several other health problems. Nutrition plays a key role in maintaining good health and enhancing treatment outcomes. Essential nutrients include vitamin, minerals, fatty acids, help to strengthen immune system and reduce inflammation. Multivitamin, especially folate and biotin, along with other minerals, play a pivotal role in supporting our immune system and inflammation. Natural antioxidant agents like ginseng, ginkgo, bio, uh, bioflavonoids, lycopene, carotenoids, garlic powder, green tea can also play a part in fighting oxidative stress. 
nutraceutical in forms of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants can play a significant role in management of fatigue, protective role for managing CBD. During infection, nutraceuticals that include all this can help, uh, help patient by building immunity, reducing oxidative stress, enhancing energy and stamina. Intake of amino acids immediately post-operatively could help in support wound healing, immune function, and muscle preservation. And to manage disease progression, nutraceuticals suppress, antiox so suppress oxidative stress via different mechanisms. Thank you so much for a patient hearing.